It's Monday, July 20th, 2020. It's good to be back. I took a few days off. Uh, I just had to detach, unplug uh, uh, for a few days. It, it, everything is just becoming so overwhelming uh, with what we are watching take place in this country, what we're watching take place politically, uh, financially. So I had to take a break and uh, just kind of recharge the batteries. I'm sure many of you can relate. The, the news continues to be discouraging. It's very, very bad. Uh, and I want to talk about a few things uh, today on the show. Uh, I did post a Patreon video a few days ago. So if you're not over on Patreon, please come over and join Patreon. I have a little bit more freedom on that platform. And I will be trying to get another video up uh, this week. Also, uh, I've, I've been reading some of the comments. Uh, there's just so many people out there who are, are just so intelligent with what's going on. And then there are those people who really aren't. Uh, I had a woman write me on Facebook a couple days ago saying how sad it was because I'm so pessimistic. I should just have a, uh, have a beer, forget about everything, uh, la di da di da Anyways, you know, I feel sorry for these people. Um, if you're not concerned about what's happening to your country, if you're not concerned about your own individual life uh, financially, uh, I, I feel really bad for you. You are so naive. You are so conditioned, so brainwashed. Uh, you know, if you want to have some beers and forget about everything, that's fine. But we are living in one of the most exciting periods in history. And we're also living in one of the most dangerous times in history. And if you are not aware of what is happening and what is about to happen, uh, I feel extremely sorry for you. And there's many people out there who would rather just smoke or drink uh, things away, hoping that that's going to take the pain away, hoping that, that that's going to stop reality from coming. Uh, again, these are going to be the most challenging, exciting, dangerous times in the history of America, you know, so many people get, you know, so involved in the Super Bowl or, or, or an NBA championship game. This is the most exciting time in world history. And your country's future depends on it. So uh, there are going to be millions of people who have the same mentality that they're just going to smoke it away, drink it away, not worry about it till it gets here. If you're one of those people, you're going to pay a very, very severe price. But let's get in and talk about some things today because I know 98% of you watching this video are completely awake and aware of what's happening right now and preparing for what's coming. Here's an article on the hedge today, still searching for that V-shaped recovery. And, um, I'm searching for it too. And when I read articles like this one on CNBC, will there be a second $1,200 stimulus check? Uh, yeah, I believe that there will be. And uh, there could be even more you know, per household. Uh, but when we take a look at this, if you're an individual and you're gonna get $1,200, this is absolutely nothing. When you're falling behind on your rent, you're falling behind on your mortgage payment, you're falling behind on your car payment, your credit card uh, payment, your utilities, food, you're living off of a credit card, what is $1,200? And who is gonna pay for another $1,200 stimulus check to millions of people here in America. Think about that. Who is gonna pay for that? Uh, your purchasing power is gonna pay for that because we have massive inflation coming to America. Here's another one. $600 unemployment boost, stimulus checks, government relief is coming to an abrupt end. Now get this, 25 million Americans are receiving the additional $600 employment benefits established uh, in the Federal CARES Act. If this is not extended, the poverty rate right here in America and the homeless rate in America is going to explode. Average unemployment check without the $600 bonus stands nationally $333. In Oklahoma, all right, this is per week, $330 per week. That's the national average. In Ho Oklahoma, it's $100 per week. So if you're in Oklahoma, you're getting $100 a week plus the 600, that's $700 a week. These $600 checks are about to come to an end if they are not extended. 
that means you go from $700 a week to $100 a week. What is going to happen to people like these people in Oklahoma? If you're going, if you're getting the average $330, uh, dollars a week plus the 600 you're, you're taking in almost a thousand so you go from a thousand to three hundred and thirty three dollars uh, a, a week what is is the average American 25 million of these people receiving uh, these additional six hundred dollar bonuses uh, their life is about to change if there is not an emergency uh, uh, relief. If there's no emergency relief here and these $600 bonuses uh, are extended, if they're not, there's going to be big trouble in America. Speaking of the V-shaped recovery again, here we go. Nearly 17,000 Southwest employees sign up for buyouts, voluntary leave as furlough threats loom. This is 28% of the workforce of Southwest. Where is the V-shaped recovery? All these people who have written me in the comments, all these people who have written me on Facebook telling me uh, that America is going to boom right back, the, 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 somebody's going to flip the switch, the jobs are all going to come back. In fact, we're going to create even more jobs. We're not creating jobs. The jobs uh, where we do see some recovery, those are just old jobs that people are returning to, but they're returning to their old job uh, with wage cuts, hourly cuts. Uh, it's not the same. This economy is not recovering, and there certainly is no V-shaped recovery. Boeing is running out of space to park its newly built 787 Dreamliners. Why is that? Because nobody wants to buy them. Expect layoffs coming to Boeing. Um, and what's interesting is, and maybe if I get a chance uh, one of these days, uh, they're parking uh, some of their planes actually out here about an hour from my house, hour and, an hour and a half from my house in Victorville, out in the middle of the desert. And why is that? There's no buyers, and that's why their sales have dropped 50%. They're parking their planes in Victorville, California, in the middle of the desert. Planes are piling up. Gold hits highest since 2011. Silver at four-year peak. Silver broke $20 today. Uh, gold extends past $1,800. I don't believe there's going to be any looking back. I, I, I believe that gold is going straight to 2000 I believe we can hit 2000 this year. Uh, it's good to see silver back over 20 I don't know where it's at exactly right now. But as long as this government continues to create massive amounts of debt, print tons of money. Uh, we have half the country without work, uh, and we are watching a global depression take place. I don't think uh, it takes much to figure out that these metals, that these two, two of the most undervalued assets, the two most undervalued assets in the entire world are going nowhere but up. And, you know, these people who criticize me telling you, and me, you should be buying gold when it hits $600. You should be buying silver when it hits $5. Where are they now? We're going to look back at $2,000 gold and 20 some odd dollars silver and just say, why didn't we buy more? It, it is so cheap right now. I bought more gold this week. I will be buying more precious metals uh, by next week for sure. Uh, these prices, I... I, I I kid you not, I truly believe, and I don't give financial advice here, but I truly believe that these prices are extremely cheap. We haven't seen anything yet. People ask me where I buy from, SD Bullion. I have a link down below, check them out. I don't care where you buy it from. You can go to anybody on the internet. You can go to your local coin shop. Any bullion dealer that you trust, go to. I shop at SD Bullion, link down below. If you're looking at buying some precious metals, I just made a purchase from them last week. I will be making another purchase in the coming week. Central banks buy another 40 tons of gold in May. This is on the hedge. So if the central banks continue to accumulate, they're not buying paper gold, they're not buying ETFs, they are buying physical, they're buying the physical. Um, so you need to be buying the physical gold, you need to be buying the physical silver, and you need to be thinking and acting like your own central bank. Political, America's hidden economic crisis, widespread wage cuts. Again, uh, as I spoke about earlier, people going back to work, going back to their old jobs, getting less hours, getting their wages cut, they are bringing home less money 
now than they did before this uh, whole uh, infection began, before we started sinking into this depression, people now are making less at the same jobs than they were four months ago. Millennial renters abandoned their plans to buy a home. 11% were planning to buy a home. 43% canceled these plans. You know, how could a millennial, at least a majority of millennials, ever buy a house? Look at the college tuition debt that they're never going to be able to pay off. These worthless degrees that they got, many before this uh, depression even began, working at bars and restaurants, hospitality, leisure, Starbucks, etc., never going to be able to pay back uh, these loans. These literally are financial or economic slaves that are never going to be able to get off a plantation now because they are debt slaves uh, taking these loans uh, that they're never going to be able to pay back with worthless degrees that are never going to pay them uh, money, let alone even uh, have a job. 43% of the home buyers who changed their minds decided not to buy a home said they changed their plans because of economic uncertainty and the second reason being the loss of income. And this is going to continue to happen to a lot of people. Wolfstreet.com. Uneven freight recovery after new outbreaks. Daily truck trips already fell 10% since June 25th. June shipments by truck, rail, and air in the U.S. are down 17.8%. This June, compared to last June, they're down 22% from June 2018. When you look at these numbers, they're absolutely monstrous, and they are another telltale sign of where we're at right now and where we are heading. Where is the light at the end of the tunnel? What is going to pull this economy out of the depression that it is sinking into right now. There is no light at the end of the tunnel. In fact, things are going to get much worse. My heart continues to go out to the small business owner in America. Um, it's so sad to see what's going on, yet the criminality and thievery and lawbreaking that is going on. We look at the so many of these bankrupt companies, executives um, of bankrupt companies have made $131 million. Just the executives of these bankrupt companies have made $131 million this year while the little guy is being decimated, while his businesses are permanently closing down. These executives and CEOs of these bankrupt companies are being rewarded for bad business, for taking on massive amounts of debt, while the small guy who did nothing wrong is being decimated. Here's an article right here. Firms with troubled past got millions of dollars in Triple P small business aid. Again, while the little guy gets decimated. So what lies ahead for America? No doubt, the greatest depression the world has ever seen. That's what lies ahead for America, and that's what lies ahead for the entire globe. We're going to see a further decline right here in America of jobs, of consumption, and investment. Look at the so-called job recovery. Um, 4.8 million jobs were restored in the month of June. Three million of these jobs were in the service sector. These were service sector jobs, leisure and hospitality, low paying jobs. And now how many of those people who got their job back in June are already back in the unemployment line? Wow, we've been bleeding, hemorrhaging jobs of 1 million plus jobs a week for 17 straight weeks. Let me repeat that. In the last 17 weeks, we have lost over a million jobs per week. This coming Thursday, we'll get the jobless claims yet again, and more than likely, they're going to be over 1 million. But what's scary is the jobs that are coming back are low-paying jobs. How are we going to get out of this depression by having people just work at restaurants, retail, leisure, hospitality, uh, Starbucks? I mean, how does America retain being a world global superpower if most of this country is working in leisure and hospitality.
Consumers are not going to be traveling to shopping malls, restaurants, to mass entertainment, to sporting events. That's over. Look at these cruise lines. Look at the airlines. They're being decimated. 23 million rent evictions are projected in the coming months. National debt is going to rise to $30 trillion within the next 18 months. Ladies and gentlemen, this is 100% unsustainable. Commercial property sector in the US is in very, very big trouble. We look at malls, office buildings, hotels, resorts, factories, apartment complexes. Very, very big trouble. I don't think I need to remind any of you out there to take a look around in your own areas. Look at the for sales and for lease signs, and this is gonna bleed over into the residential market also. Bank and investors hold much of this debt that will never be paid back, and this is, is going to cause very, very big trouble in the banking system right here in America. Um, we have never seen anything like we're seeing right now, ladies and gentlemen. And, and again, this is why I had to take a break for a couple of days because it, it, this is, I mean, what is happening is so dangerous, um, very, uh, very scary. Uh, I'm very concerned about the future of America. I'm very concerned uh, about the average American. Look, there's people that watch this show who continue to want to debate me that they're right and that I'm wrong. I can afford to be wrong. I will just have more brass, more food, more gold, more silver, and more cash at the end of the day. My life isn't going to change. If you don't have these type of assets, if you don't have food and water and financial assets put away, if you don't have an emergency fund put away, and I'm right, you're going to be in really, really big trouble. I can always eat my food. I can always cash my gold in and silver in for cash. Um, my life's not going to change. But if you're one of these people who continues to debate me and you're just putting er all your faith into the stock market, all your faith in the U.S. dollar, um, I feel sorry for you because I think you're going to I think you're going to get hurt really, really bad when this whole thing implodes. We're now, in my opinion, in the beginning stages of the greatest depression mankind has ever seen. And we're heading into the abyss of this depression. And if you're not holding on to real assets, if you're not preparing for this day of reckoning, you are going to be wiped out physically and financially, and you better be walking close to God or you're gonna be wiped out spiritually also. You know, we have never seen this type of uncertainty. We have never had this much debt. We've never had this many job losses. We've never seen our country with half the country jobless, not working. Uh, we're not manufacturing anything here in America. Uh, we're straight on our way to $30 trillion of debt within the next 18 months. We may even get there sooner. Uh, massive amounts of stimulus trying to hold everything together, but everything is being held together now by a rubber band. And we are literally one event away from this country imploding uh, financially and socially. And I cannot stress enough the importance of, of preparation. And I'm going to repeat this on a daily basis. Prepare, prepare, prepare. We are heading into the abyss of this depression. This ride is about to get even more bumpy than it already is. Um, I'm so worried about so many people out there who have not prepared and we're really now at a point where if you haven't begun to prepare, it's already too late. So many people dependent on the government and when the government no longer can afford to pay these people, we're gonna see big trouble. We're gonna see more violence, more homelessness, um, more suicide. It's gonna be a really, really ugly time and we're getting very, very close. Uh, just look at what's happening right now. Um, I just cannot stress the importance uh, of prayer and walking close to God. Uh, again, you know, things 
are getting so troublesome, I had to take a few days off. It, it affects me. Um, I certainly get no pleasure um, reporting the news. I, I wish I was reporting phenomenal great news every day, that we were getting out of debt, that we were manufacturing, that, uh, you know, uh, airline companies were doing great. Boeing was selling tons of planes all over the world. There was peace all over the world. Um, unfortunately, 90% 90 90 of this world is already in a depression. And that means that we are not selling whatever goods we're making. We can't even sell around the world because the world is broke. And so everybody's going to be affected because everything is connected and interlinked. If a big bank goes down anywhere in the world, uh, we're going to have big trouble here. Let's not forget about Deutsche Bank. Um, if a Deutsche Bank goes down tonight, your world changes tomorrow. So I'm going to leave it right there today. God bless every one of you. Please share this video. Give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Hit the bell notification so that you are alerted when the newest video comes out. God bless every one of you. Talk to you very, very soon.